Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> we are Total Package Podcast, and if you accidentally clicked on this feed, sorry, the exit is at the end of the show. You can't get out now. <laughs> Tonight, we invite you to join us as we explore the world of conventions. We're going to take a stroll through a typical convention and let you in on our perspective of everything <sighs> from Artist Alley and vendors to cosplay and BO. So grab your breath mints and your body spray and come on in. Admission is free, so welcome and enjoy the show. I'm your host, Anna, and with me tonight is my co-host, Loretta. Hey, guys. Hi, Loretta. How are you guys doing tonight? Hello. Hey. Doing great. Hey. Thank you. Okay. And we've got here Ams. She's hey, going to be in the next on? one on the lot. Um, so, yeah, I'm Ams or Amber Mika on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at amolin0. I also have a red bubble and a Patreon. So feel free to, to check me out. Um, I am a freelance artist, at least trying to. How about you, Lady Love? Hello, hello. I am Lady Love, or also known as Bethany Lowry. You would probably know my husband, Jason Lowry. And... Doing a quick shout out to his new podcast, The Nerds Have Spoken. They upload every <laughs> Thursday morning, so give a listen to him and his group of chuckleheads. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook um, as Bethany Flav, meet up Flap Lowry. It's been a very long day. Sorry about that. <laughs> or. <laughs> Maiden name Flav, but Mary name Lowry. And you can find me on Instagram as ladylove underscore 2019. And next to me is just Chan. That's me, just Chan. <laughs> just Chan. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me all over the place doing all kinds of things, <laughs> hanging out with all kinds of crazy people. Well, she gets on this with us every Thursday. Every so Thursday, we yeah. <laughs> you guys are awesome and you help me get the breakthrough in my week I need, you know. It's like it's like getting over the Mondays, but you do it on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Hey, it's almost Friday and it's almost the weekend, so what can we ask? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, on, weekend. on Mondays <laughs> I have I have ETR on on the uh, Realm of Collectors YouTube channel, so I get I get to break through my Monday that way, and then just like nice. <laughs> just, just stay all like, through the week. <laughs> that halfway point is you guys, and then I just push through. <laughs> what about shelf gravy? Oh yeah, yeah. JD and I have been working on the shelf gravy stuff. I've been been busy. I've been busy behind the scenes, playing on the computer, learning new tricks, and all kinds of things. So yeah, um, man. I'm partying it down, <laughs> learning new programs and doing my research. But anyway, how are you, Grims? What's up? Not much. <laughs> Just living this a wonderful day. Yesterday was my birthday. So you got me a year older. Living this 2020. 2020. <laughs> um, you can find me on all Quixotic Grims. So you'll be able to see me on Instagram. And last week we had talked about pets. I actually do have a pet Instagram. You can see my little. Baby Harvey behind me on Harvazoobles. So if you want to follow my pets, they are all there and you can love them to death. I'll shoot it back all over to Anna. Mm -hmm. All right. So tonight, we want to start a little normal. We want to go with what conventions do you go to? I personally go to whatever interests me. If it's a toy convention or a comic book convention or a Star Trek convention or a Star Wars convention, if it's just something that I follow, I will go to it. What about you, Loretta? Uh, most of what I go to right now, I try and stick with our local conventions. Um, Tidewater Comic Con, because uh, I'm in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, so not much down this way, but Virginia Beach, Hampton Roads, um, occasionally we'll travel up to DC, go to Awesome Con. Uh, we're actually headed up there this weekend for KatsuCon. Uh, it's Ooh. at the convention center, big convention center up there. It's first time going to this one, so it ought to be interesting. Yeah, um, you're going to be in my neck of the wood. Uh, yeah, it's going to yeah, be same. so much fun. I'm not so. familiar with KatsuCon. What's KatsuCon? Um, it's mostly Japanese based, like anime type stuff, but there's a lot of mm -hmm. cosplay that goes on there because there's like, a ton oh, of people that that go to it so this is the first adventure with this one um 
There's lots of other conventions that happen to that uh, particular convention center. Uh, MAGFest is one of them, which is a video game and music uh-huh. convention that yeah, my husband yeah. goes to um, every January. So there's lots of stuff that happens there. Um, other than that, uh, we sometimes we'll go to Raleigh. We've gone to a couple there. And I think of, uh, Charlotte, <laughs> um, Richmond, pretty much and anything. At, and JCC. That's mostly the toy conventions and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, we went to res- uh, RetroCon. Um, that was fun. And with mostly just kind of whatever we can get ourselves into. It's hard for me to take off time during the summertime to go do things. So I try and find stuff in the fall and spring when it's a little bit easier, not during the tourist season, to take off and go do. What well, about you, cool. Anne? Um, So I've only really been to like five conventions in my life so far. But yeah, based on really interest, um, the first one I've gone to was called BronyCon. That was in 2014. Um, yeah, look at you. <laughs> Bethany what was that? Right um, that was for, yeah, obviously, Brony is for My Little Pony. Um, back awesome. when it was, like, super popular and everything, I was actually a vendor with one of my friends. Um, and we actually did, I actually sold some of my art, some of his art, too. And it was loads of fun. And then after that, it was mainly toy conventions. Um, since my husband is a big collector he mainly collects Transformers, uh, Big Mechs, the like, you know, like Gundam, stuff like that. So we've been just going to those so far. But I would love, 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 love to go to Otaku. Uh, no, was, is, it, is there an Otaku Con? Or is it just like yeah. Otaku Con? Yeah, yeah there's one of them, yeah. Ones. Any of the anime ones or um, Comic Con, I've never gone to. I'd love to go to Comic Con. So I definitely want to yeah. get more into that. So, I mean, I've had some experience, not too much. But yeah, I had those just really based on interest and uh, usually proximity too. Because if it's like across the country, I don't think that'd be too feasible for me. So, uh, how about you, mm-hmm. Beth? Um, what conventions have I not been to yet? Um, <laughs> a lot of the local ones: uh, Baltimore Comic Con, DC Awesome Comic Awesome Con, the ones here in Fairfax and the Tyson's area. Um, traveled up to. NJCC, RetroCon, um, just went to ZoloCon this past weekend, um, RetroCon, oh my god, I can't even remember, I mean, we've, oh, uh, uh, TFCon, I mean, if there, if there's a convention, we're probably there, Mm -hmm. um, spent a lot of time traveling to them. Awesome. What Love about that. you, Chan? Mm, I'm a, I'm a rookie when it comes to conventions. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to go to conventions, but I never went. Um, most of the time in my younger life, <laughs> pre forty years old, um, I was not being a nerd. Was kind of frowned upon amongst the circles of people I was in, so I did not get the chance to do those kinds of things that I wanted to do. And now that I can. Uh, My first convention, I went with JD to NJCC um, and met all of the fancy, awesome, kick-ass brothers that are now my realm family. So um, that's that. And and JD sold at NJCC and I I helped him. And that was a that was a really interesting perspective to have. And being a small convention, it was good that it was my first one, because after that, um, jumping into TFCon was kind of shocking you know and then baltimore comic-con after that was also a little bit like wow this is very interesting like this is something i've always wanted to be involved in i just never had the opportunity and now i do so hopefully one day i'll be able to hand in my rookie card and <laughs> <laughs> hopefully me too yeah be a pro <laughs> i don't know we'll see okay it's, it's, it's a lot of fun though so i've i've been to a few and then some local ones of course like the hershey show um, oh yeah the hershey show yeah and uh the the retro cons and you know things of that nature that are local and of course mm-hmm. the the lovely convention that we were at this weekend and and all those kinds of things. So it's mostly small conventions that I have my experience in. I think Baltimore was the biggest like random con I've been to. And then oh, yeah. the TF con was like the biggest specialized con I've been to. So that's, that's my rundown. What about you, Grims? 
Um, for the past couple of years, I've really only done two major conventions. Uh, one being New, uh, New, New York Comic Con, um, cool. where I usually do comic characters as cosplay. And then um, the one that I've been going to ever since college uh, has been Fanime, which is one back in California that I fly out for every Memorial Day weekend. So I've been pretty consistent nice. with that one. I go hang yeah, out with all wow. my California friends. And it's just one of those 24 hour party cons, honestly. Like it just <laughs> is there. I got some photos of some fun nights. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good time. Those are the photos we will not see, probably. <laughs> no, they're not too bad. I picked, I picked some good ones. But um, for the most part, it's just. It's anime conventions tends to be it. That's one of my goals for this year is I want to do more anime conventions. So I'm doing a lot of like little local ones around. Uh, but I do want to get back into my cosplay and, and such. Mm -hmm. That's totally cool. So staying on that kind of theme, what would draw you to a convention? Like let's say Joe Schmo is getting ready to run a convention. What would draw you to the convention? I personally... If you're going to have some good vendors there that are doing some retro toys, things like that, or even retro gaming, I would be into it. What about you, Loretta? What would draw you to a convention? Um, sometimes it's all about just who's going to be there. Um, could be an actor, could be an artist, could be a cosplayer, somebody that I admire that I want to see. Um, and just sometimes it's just a fun to be able to go out and dress up and go to a convention and see the different things that are going on and uh, see all the different cosplayers that are, that are out. You never know what you're going to see when you go to the, any one of these conventions. I mean, it could be anywhere from like lady Iron Man or even something as weird as one of my cosplays, Harriel, uh, a lot of mashups, a lot of really <laughs> uh -huh. unique characters that are available for <laughs> And you don't, ha and then one, one thing I like is, is it's not just about like the cosplay. It could be if you like a certain artist or if you like a certain mm -hmm. fandom, you could always find somebody there that you could hang out with that likes that self same type of thing too. So oh, it's kind of interesting. It's That's so totally cool. Mm -hmm. I love your Ariel. Yeah, I do. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive right there. Oh my god, any transformers? That's my friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my friend Brad. Um him and his wife are actually um they were stationed down here for a Coast Guard and he started out doing uh oh that's my money cosplays. Um started out doing like he had one Megatron that he had made and he moved to California and he's like blown up all kinds of crazy stuff. Nice. And it's not just conventions that I get to like this one here that's posted here is a, a library they decided to do a Harry Potter oh, that's night cool. so that was pretty awesome yeah so. that was really good yeah but how about you Ams yeah I'd say the same like a uh, basically interest um well what draws me to it um yeah if I if I have a if there's a specific artist I, I'm into like um with these last Transformers conventions I've gone to uh there has um been Casey Collar. He's one of the lead artists on um, IDW, in IDW and uh, for the Transformers comics. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, if you want to talk about that, that's from uh, the first convention I went to, BronyCon, and that's some of the art that I had designed and some of the booths that were there. Um, that first one was one of the people that I sold art with. It was really fun. And this person make chain mail um out of that is so cool yeah cool. i actually did get a necklace from him too i still have that and it was it was massive it was in um the convention center in baltimore so mm. it was really nice and big it, it held like the mm -hmm. whole thing oh, wow. um i think uh lauren faust she's the creator of the fourth generation my little pony series and she was mm -hmm. there too so it was it was nice and big it was super fun seeing people with their cosplay and then you see these independent artists who have not only their own stuff. I love that plushie so much. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have some of their own stuff, and also like some of the fandom-related stuff. It was just so nice to be around like-minded people and to just interact with them and sort of squee and spoo about our common interests and meet these amazing artists. Like this one artist here, she made um, these beautiful, elegant designs. It was just amazing to just talk with them and then yeah there was this table here 
where people, um, they just drew their own designs and wrote their own messages for the entire uh, convention. It was uh, for three days, I think. And it was That's just amazing cool. to see. Yeah, it was, mm -hmm. it's just so I would love to be back into it again. It's just, mm -hmm. um, it's just the price I have to really worry about and the location. Yeah, that, that's what actually one commission I did. Um, <laughs> if anyone's familiar with the smooths, no one can stop the smooths from Generation 1, My Little Pony. Here you go. There's a little shout out. <laughs> it's so fun. And like one person asked for it, and I was just like, I have no idea what the smooth is, but I'll figure it out. And it was just like one of the best pieces I ever made. So well, that's yeah. awesome. That's cool. It was, so cool. <laughs> was yeah, it your um, favorite? Oh, that was my favorite commission I ever did. Yeah, it was so fun. Totally in my style. Like having it overtake the the convention um, per se as the font, as the you know the topography so it was it was so fun it was my first convention too so it was my, the best experience i could have ever had so if i could figure out how to vend at another convention again that'd be absolutely amazing <laughs> right yeah that would be cool yeah, yeah absolutely um yeah go on ahead beth um i kind of rambled oh, so <laughs> no, <you're fine. laughs> it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> um a lot of it for me it's you know jason and i go to a lot of conventions together so a lot of it's you know, something he's interested in, too, I go, you know, I just tag along. But um, just a lot of it is just to see what's what's around, what's what's the nerdy stuff. A lot of it, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, the ROC get-together. You know, these are all from the first Chicago, or the first NJCC, I mean, yeah. TFCon Chicago. That actually was really cool. We got to meet Stanley. Mm, that, that was is one so of, awesome. Yeah, that was that was um awesome con meeting like meeting that's what, Stanley. Um, that's what drew me to the first the TF con in Chicago because Max and I just got into the ROC and then just became part of it and went to the to the uh, 2018 convention and then the one in Reston this last year. So yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it was really cool meeting meeting Stanley. Unfortunately, we kind of were just ushered through and we were told don't look at him don't talk to him don't touch him no. um we basically just stood around him got our picture and we're left we uh, we were told to leave and then we waited in line to get his autograph and he just kind of seemed like like he wasn't really alive oh, oh and wow. the one picture jason just reminded me of the one picture with the cosplayer uh, she almost had a costume effect, costume issue when we were taking that picture because her bustier started to slip down and we almost oh, got no. a nipple shot. <laughs> oh, so, no. yeah. That's Luckily, so Jason no. kind of put his arm around so it wouldn't happen and she was able to <laughs> fix Are her. Are you talking uh, about Yaya Han? Yeah. She oh, no. she almost had a, a costume malfunction while we were getting the picture because she was trying to reach up to hug Jason and he's so tall that yeah that oh, one yeah. <laughs> and oh, no. so yeah we almost had a uh, a nipple shot. Woo! I'm, I'm trying to get it. Cool. He keeps kicking me. Back. No, it's all Sorry. good. <laughs> you you could kind of see that one's it's not as bad, but yeah, she, we we almost. Uh, Almost saw full boob on her. Did she have to like duck behind the curtain wow. after the picture? Oh, she kind yeah. of like was able to just kind of like scooch it up. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. Oh my god. But she was really cool. She was just like, I'm so sorry. I mean, she was kind of embarrassed. We were like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That it was happens. that was funny. That was like one of the first times I went like starstruck. I was like I was like standing over there. I'm like, oh my god, there she is! But I didn't want to go over and take a photograph with her or anything. And you guys just kind of like hanging out. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> oh no, Jason's just like whatever. <laughs> he's just like if he if he knows a cosplayer and they're there, she he's always like he's gonna get pictures with them. I mean, when yeah. we were at um, ZoloCon this past weekend, one of his co one of the cosplayers he really liked, she was there. So he was like he he bought a few. Um, pieces from her so it was well he looked at me he's like can you come with me because i don't want her to be like creeped out that this you know older guy is coming over like when he like talking was to her and i was, I was like what girl. that's fine 
Is yeah, it? yeah, Supergirl. yeah. Was that yeah. Supergirl? Yeah. yeah, she's good. Yeah, <laughs> and we actually have a um, a girl who does cosplay that she does a lot of stuff up at Tashi Station, and we actually when we went to see um, Captain uh, Marvel, she was there. So oh, that was wow. really cool. Oh, cool. That's really cool. That's so, cute. what about you, Just Chan? <laughs> 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 um, I think spending time with with people, I uh, I have like minded, you know, oh, experiences okay. with, you know, oh, you know, that was uh, the best. Uh, yeah. just just being able to hang out with everybody, spending Aww. time, Aww. spending I time close. That was that was the first NJCC I went to. That was and there's a, there's TFCon Chicago. It's Aww. it's really those experiences, just spending time with these people that really pulled me into the convention life because it feels like it's okay for me to nerd out, you know, and Absolutely. and have a good time. Yeah, it's a goof. That actually that actually kind of <laughs> reminds me because uh, oh Josh, yes, was the first the, the first. Chicago the uh, the Chicago this the past uh, TFCon in Chicago, and we were going up to the uh, RC party, and she looked at me and she was like, she was obviously nervous, and she was like, "Yo, can I trust these guys and drink around them?" Oh and I was God. like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, was I was like, so trust good. me, if they will take care of you. Oh, yeah. If you were to get drunk and pass it out, they'll carry you to your room. Uh, <laughs> that's a I first that NJCC, too. Yeah. <laughs> this was on the road to TFCon Chicago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, and then and then there's Energon jerking off uh, Josh. <laughs> I mean, it's all these fun oh. times, you know, like walking around the convention, seeing seeing the things that are going on and, you know, like looking at art, looking at the toys, you know, getting, looking for that rare fun item, you know, whatever it is. It's, that's all fun, but it's all these people that make it that much more enjoyable. The goofing, the fun, mm -hmm. the, the silliness, just like the antics of, of just yeah. family. And that's, it's almost like a family reunion every single time mm -hmm. there's one yeah, of these conventions. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. That was <laughs> RetroCon. <laughs> Wait, my God, friend, my, cake still. my best friend Wayne's uh, convention. Yeah, the chocolate peanut butter cake. Just doing stuff for family and and everything. It's mm -hmm. kind of that's what draws yeah, me wanna, in. Do you want to talk that up? Because you made a gluten free cake and it was oh my God, that cake. amazing. That was, yes, so I'm I'm the in the process cakes, of trying to muffins. work on that. Yeah, yeah, I've been trying to establish some gluten-free recipes for a long time. And now that I feel like I'm heading in a good direction, Dawn is going to help me with some stuff because she has some good recipes because she has to be gluten-free. Um, yeah. That's, that's just kind of where we're at. We're going to work on, I'm, I'm working on some chance goodies. I'm going to try to get some stuff together to take some orders and ship stuff out to our friends across the country and, that way they can experience the cookies and all the stuff that we talk about all the time anyway. And then the cupcakes and the, and the cake is just, that's fun to me, you know, just like you were saying, and the, Anna, muffins. the oh, baking, yeah, absolutely. the baking yeah. is the fun stuff, you know, it's blueberry so muffins, chocolate seeing, muffins, peanut yeah. butter icing, blah, blah, you know, and seeing everyone's reactions, how they're like, you made this like, wow, you know, <laughs> you're so like taking a bath. She made it and... in the hotel kitchen. Yeah. That was like I the did. most yeah. amazing yeah. part of it too. <laughs> I did. I did do that. She yep. had me at peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Peanut butter. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good reason. It's 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 nice Unless whenever. Not it's, not good. <laughs> it's nice whenever your friends can go. Oh, this is great. And, you know, you did you did well. You know, <laughs> like not just your family. It's like I'm gonna eat this because it's on the counter. Thanks, mom. You know, like it's actually people who will be yeah. like. Why the hell did you do this? This tastes is like this tastes like crap. You know, people will be honest with you are like, this is good, thanks. <laughs> but anyway, what what about you, Grims? Do you have any draws to conventions? Uh yes. Well, um, when it comes to conventions, mostly anime is been pretty much my uh, forte with all. Uh, so cosplay is usually the huge draw for me when it comes to conventions. Um, 
past couple years or so, <laughs> 10 years, I had gotten more into body paint style. So I like the completely transforming yourself Ooh. into a whole different wow. um, character. <laughs> just being another person. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, a cosplay to me is like Halloween every day, which is my favorite holiday. And mm -hmm. I even got married on it, which I'll show a couple mm -hmm. photos for that. But um, wow. for me, there's, there's Grimm's. Uh, oh, but it's, it. oh, awesome. <laughs> but uh, it's just always that experience of seeing the different costumes, improving yourself and just having fun and spending way too much money on stuff you probably really don't need. <laughs> it's it's really what it is. Ooh, yeah, I did Martian Manhunter. My friend, uh, uh, that she did Wonder Woman, she wanted to do another Marvel cosplay, uh, not Marvel, DC cosplay. And I was like, I am not going to be Hera. I'm not going to be this. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do Martian Manhunter because he's cool. Um, oh, I love him. Yeah. Those are so great. Amazing. I love them. You can flip through them again. If you want to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't do cosplay. So like, I find this really interesting and they're seriously great. They're really nice. I'm going to yeah. actually switch over to showing uh, a couple photos with uh, Gort. Oh, okay. He's, he says that I don't have any show any photos of him. Uh, no. But he's done a couple <laughs> cosplays and, and things of that nature uh, with me. There's our wedding. So oh. my wedding oh. uh, just to kind of like show you just some examples of things <laughs> that we kind of go uh, a little more in detail for. But yeah, like that My Little Pony one, that one was fun. Um, oh, oh, that's awesome! Yeah, the, oh, cool. yeah, yeah. That's what that was. That was a lot of fun. But the the first body paint that I did was Tigra, and that took eight hours of painting. Mm -hmm. Which oh, yeah, had um, yeah. yeah, he had done that. Uh, painted all the black stripes on my back and such. So that was just a a fun experience. Did you airbrush? Sure. Or did you hand paint? He hand painted it first. We did a full orange body paint on it. Um, and then I, uh, how to say it? He then he had to hand draw all those uh, those stripes on my back. You don't really see it so much on this photo, uh, but you can kind of see it around all the edging around me. Um, wow! It's just all on my back, lines, 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 lines. It looks really uh, good. But yeah, nice. it was a lot of fun. It's cold. It was cold because by the time mm. it was done, it was like six o'clock at night. So then, <laughs> that, oh, as I yeah. said, it's a, a party convention wow. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Does it does it wear off easy or, no. or like was it wash off easy or something like that or no? You really have to sit there and scrub scrub it off, especially because oh I God. do more to try to keep it on. I'll put like not primers but like finishing sprays and stuff to keep try to keep it on. Mm -hmm. Although it gets mm -hmm. everywhere, but it, you really have you you have it on for you a couple days. Real quick though, do you have like products certain products that you do use or have like either um, you. Either you or Loretta, because I know Loretta does the whole like full face paint stuff too. Like, yes. is there? Yeah, I like Paradise personally. Um, I've always been very f fan of their stuff, their products. I feel like it's been um, pretty solid. I don't know about for Loretta. Um, right now, I am uh, working on some. I use a lot of the aqua colors. Um, that's mostly for, that's the only one I use right now is the lavender. That's mm -hmm. for my Ursula cosplay. And, mm -hmm. and then I have, um, I actually use a lot of like over the counter makeup, especially when I'm doing like contouring and things like that. I'll buy like cheap eyeshadow sets and just use those until I run out or if I find something on sale, because mm -hmm. I know those stuff is meant for putting on your face and stuff so i don't have mm -hmm. to worry about my skin freaking out if i'm yeah. using something that's not supposed to be on my skin i did i did harrow with jd for a halloween party with at, and uh it just it, like i had to do some studying because i never did any kind of body painting before oh, yeah. like i've watched tv shows about it and i've always been interested in it and i always thought cosplay was amazing and fun and all awesome but i never i never knew anything specific about the types of products that they used and okay. i did buy the paradise um that's like, awesome yeah and and i think though i'm a i'm a little older than than you guys i believe so like when it came down to like it it cracked a lot for me and mm -hmm. i feel like because they recommended using water with it i think that mm -hmm. probably the next time i do it i would probably use an oil in yeah. order to to have well, like that's how like the primer. um 
the Maron clown makeup. Mm -hmm. It's really good for that. It's an oil base, but you have to use baby oil to take it off. Mm -hmm. I use that on one other uh, Mm -hmm. Halloween costume and it covers really well, but it is really tough to get off. (laughs) So that one actually, and that was a, the, instead of using full body paint, I used a lavender t-shirt that I found. That was (laughs) only like my, like the very basic stuff. Um, This time, for the cosplay on Saturday, I actually ordered two sets of lavender pantyhose mm. and I made it into like a crop top. So I yes. didn't have to paint my whole body. That's I was nice. like, I, <laughs> so and it's supposed to be cold on Saturday. So I right. was like, it's going to give me an extra layer of protection on my body. So I don't freeze stuff. So good problem <laughs> solving on that one. That's awesome. really exactly yeah, amazing. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now I had talked to Donna about some things relating to this also. And she was mentioning that there's like, some costume problem solving that sometimes you have to to do in order to like because you sweat and stuff like that and as we all know with conventions there's some motor issues so you know whenever you're in costume I guess that's something you want to like pre-game and deal with so I like I just I find all this very intriguing because I've never dealt with this especially you know convention wise like what do you what do you guys use do you use anything special or just your normal um, well, as far as mine goes, I just use my regular deodorant. Occasionally, I'll, if I'm, depending on what I'm wearing, I might use like a deodorant spray um, on certain areas or like body glide if I'm wearing tights so nothing gets ruined, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. But most of the time, it's just my regular everyday. Um, I try and stay away from anything with really heavy perfumes, mm-hmm. because especially when you get in a space like that, there can be be some people that are, are allergic to perfumes and things mm-hmm. and you don't want to cause problems for everybody else along just to keep yourself like comfortable right so. right so. do you have any solutions uh, for that crumbs uh i was gonna post stuff i guess it's kind of oh. related to it i usually keep myself just uh with a kit like i just go around with it it's yeah. kind of related to other one uh, like a survival kit uh, situation. So I'm just trying to pull it up here. Um, I kind of just, do, it's depending on the cosplay, what I end up bringing with me um, mm. tends to be it. So I took a photo of what I kind of brought with me to Zolocon this weekend. Mm. Um, just overall, depending on the costume, I usually bring, you can see there's some Advil, which is usually just because sometimes I do get headaches in there. You're getting really tired or, and things of that nature. You know, your makeup, your setting powder, foundations brushes if you're a cosplayer like the really important thing is that little black kit that's down in the corner mm. uh bringing an sewing extra string sewing kit essentially yeah. the, the extra thread bringing a needle like scissors uh safety pins is the cosplayer's best friend because that's a quick <laughs> fix for anything that's really ripped that you really need to um deal with um and then also bobby pins are huge as well for your hair depending on if you're wearing a wig you may need a couple more to kind of keep it in place really honestly a lot of that stuff has kind of just accumulated over time i'm being prepared because hmm. when you do it you kind of are going to build what fits based on your needs if i can make any kind of yeah right if i may ask how do you keep that with you like if you have like a really involved cosplay do you have to like hide it under Usually I'm bringing those uh, Eda bags that I have. A lot of times I try to build a backpack into it or I just have it in and around it with me. Mm-hmm. When you're cosplaying, it's kind mm-hmm. of expected you're going to have a backpack and, and things of that nature is so whether or not you get in and out. So I'm usually always having a backpack of some nature with me. And mm-hmm. then like okay. I'm yeah. a photo, just take it off real quick. Just make sure it's easy to take on and off. I've also yeah. seen like, some cosplayers have like someone with them who follows them mm-hmm. around. Definitely it's important right. to have a handler, especially when you're if your costume involves something, either a big skirt or mm-hmm. if you need to like visual anything, yeah, exactly. side is a problem. You need a handler to kind of guide mm-hmm. you in some way, especially if you have sharp items on your cosplay. Those are all important things so, to be aware yeah. of. So uh, yeah. another question, because you're saying you have a handler, like usually like my experience with with conventions is like we just, we kind of like we walk in, we take a glance around. We're like, OK, how do we want to? How do we want to do this? Do you do you pre do you like pre game like a route through the convention or is that 
depending on the convention, sometimes, like if it's a fanime one, I'll spend the first day not doing cosplay. I'll go do the whole convention experience. I'll go run through. I'll wear the onesies and the kikus and stuff around because it's still fun. But I'll go and do all the buying and all that stuff. And usually, like the Saturday, Sundays, Mondays will be cosplays, especially awesome. because main events tend to happen. Some people do cosplay on Thursday and choose to do it a different day. But if it's a multi day convention and you are going multiple days, you're kind of you can do a day of not cosplay and do it. But if you're going to one, you suffer in it, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's kind of like uh, this weekend, Friday. Well, tomorrow we're going up, going to the convention, hanging out, doing the thing. And then Saturday is just all about cosplay. So just kind of just doing the different things, finding out when, when things yeah. are conventions, the uh, cosplay contests and things like that. Uh, nature and uh, another thing to keep an eye on mind is I mean especially with costumes that are a little bit more um, I don't want to say provocative <laughs> but uh, <laughs> or leave a little bit less to the imagination you want to make sure that you're safe too and yeah then have somebody the, with you that can, can beat a, off the beat off the pervs yeah that's very <laughs> I've taken into another step like you know as a Woman, we are very aware of things with, like pasties. So if I have like a bathing oh, suit yeah. style outfit, I will wear a pasty mm -hmm. underneath because surprisingly women are the ones that tend to be a little bit more grotesque than men, at least mm -hmm. in anime world, just I've because it, it is a more of a thing, um, you know, lesbian type situations with it. So they'll want to be a little bit more aggressive about a woman that's dressed up provocatively. I've been one of the costumes that I have that I happen to have photo. It was a full bathing suit. And I would have to double knot the tie on the side, then oh do a bow on it because women would just gra grab it and try to pull the outfit off wow. of you. That's and terrible. So yeah. They'll yeah. just want so to do it. It's really women that tend to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know I why believe haters going to hate. I believe that. Yeah. And that's probably what it is. <laughs> so I haven't I, I didn't add this in, but it's a it's a really important question for me. How do you decide what you want to cosplay as? Is it is it ease of costume of creating the costume or is it a character that you really want or is it a combination of a lot of other things? Any of those things can be a thing personally. Um for me, sometimes it will be a group event so if I, someone else mm -hmm. wants to do something either this they want to cosplay something and you're trying to pair up with them that tends to be a common thing in terms of group of friends outside of that you're just kind of having fun and doing something that fits the convention you'll want to do comic book characters for a comic convention and anime characters for an anime convention or just screw it and do whatever you want so it's just mm -hmm. another it's just another layer of creativity or just being artistic in your own person mm -hmm. with your person mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it's kind of funny. Uh, my Ursula costume started out as a Halloween costume, and hmm. I was like, "Okay, this is really fun." So, and then I kind of evolved. Oh, cool. I went to my first convention with it in 2014, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "I was like, this is the worst thing ever." I'm like, "Why did I agree to this?" Because Justin was out of town, and I was like, "I am nuts. I can never do anything like this by myself again." So the next year, I went ahead and packed it up. I went ahead and made a new costume. Mm. And it's kind of just went with it. And Ursula has been always been one of my favorite characters. Um, my recent incarnation that I'm going to be debuting on Saturday is based on the artwork of Hannah Alexander. She does mm. the most amazing, like, Art Nouveau style artwork. And she's got a huge cosplayer fan base. I mean, she does everything from Critical Role to uh, Disney Princesses, um, uh, video games, and, and any type of character you can think of, she's done it. That's cool. Um, she, nice. If you ever get a chance to look at her stuff, it's just unbelievable. So, so, so and it could be as simple as that. You found inspiration in not just a character you love, but in an artist's rend rendition of rendition that of character. It, yeah. That's that's fantastic. Yep. That's that's a beautiful thing to hear. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the same thing that happened with my Harriel. I mean, I went ahead and she was based on an art artist that I found. He uh -huh. had done a Harley Quinn Ariel mashup, and I was like, "That is super cute." So I went and made the costume based on that. It's a great. So, that's fun. a that's a great cosplay too. I love your cosplay of Ariel. <laughs> that's that's like one of my favorite cosplays that I've seen. That is so cool, and that's a beautiful yeah. rendition. 
That's the uh, one on Sunday. That is yeah. beautiful. Wow. Like made for run runaway type. Mm. Very yeah, elegant. Really, so, yeah. so Loretta, feeding off of what you just were talking about, where you went to the convention by yourself, would you go to a convention by yourself, either to cosplay or either just go to a convention, go to the convention because it was something that you were interested in? Oh yeah. Now that I've been more familiar with how conventions run and um, how things are perceived in that situation, mm -hmm. I would. Especially, I mean, I probably wouldn't do a big elaborate cosplay by myself if I didn't have anybody else with me. But I would definitely go to still go to the convention and have a good time just because that's the kind of thing I like. So, mm -hmm. Okay. What about the two newbies, Ams and Chan? Would you two oh. guys go to a convention by yourself? No, no. I wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. At least not now. No. I no. mean, that's that's no? just so scary. And I, yeah, I I would love to go with somebody just to share in that because mm. you know you don't have to really like reach out to anyone to go like, hey, yeah, similar interest, cool. Like I'm still kind of, I wouldn't say I have social anxiety, but mm. <laughs> it's just a big part of that and I'm just like I don't really like want to sometimes to reach out and be this sort of like super gregarious type sociable person I kind of like having somebody as a, like, a wingman or someone <laughs> with me to go oh yeah we're both into this and then we can yeah. both experience this together and you know if it goes south there's someone you can fall back on so I agree with that okay. I would drive to a convention by myself if I was meeting other people <laughs> yeah but, uh, <laughs> I would be more likely to go camping in the woods alone than I would to go to a convention. By I would myself. be more scared of doing that. Yeah. What if something happens to you and no one can gonna find you? Like, oh, well. right. At least exactly. at a convention, someone will see me if I fall down this place of stairs. Like <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What about you, Bethany? Um, I, I probably would. I feel like the last two TF. Uh, TF cons, I was by myself because uh, you know, I've pretty much didn't see Jason the whole time in Chicago and in Reston because he was working the Agabus booth. I think just, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes just being able to walk around and look at things that you want to look, look at and take your time. And you don't have to feel rushed because someone else wants to go here, or see this, or do that. And you could just mm. go at your own pace and you can be like, all right, I'm done, and go find some place to sit down, and you know, I've I mean, there have been times with NJCC where I'm like, I'm kind of done with the, the you know, showroom, and I go find a corner, and I sit down, and pull a book out, and I read, and next thing I know, someone, you know, is like, oh, there you, there you are, Jason's looking for you, or Jason pops around the corner and goes, oh, that's where you, you went hiding, and I'm like, yeah, like, I just need you to get out of there. I don't know. Yeah. I, like, I, I see what you're saying, but I mean, it, the, see, the other thing is being at a convention where you know you there are people there you know is also pretty convenient, especially like you walk around by yourself, but then if you want to go get lunch or something, you can catch up with your girls and go sit down and get a sandwich. You know what I mean? Like, it's right, right. It, it's yeah. still nice, you know, I, and I will say like, that's, I don't, I enjoy doing that stuff with JD. Like that's something that him and I do together. That is it's, it's super nice that we have that time together. I mean, like we spend a lot of time together. Anyway, we play video games together. We work together when we're home, you know, like there's not much time that we don't spend together, but it's just nice to get away and be together someplace other than home. So it's just, that's another nice part of it. <laughs> we can walk around together and like elbow each other and be like, Hey, Hey, check that out. You know, <laughs> like whatever. It's just, it just makes it more fun. You know? Absolutely. That's yeah. cool. What about you, Grims? Would you go to a con by yourself? Uh, I tend to do cons more or less by myself. Although I'm going with people I, I do as Bethany says, I, a lot of times I just break away. I like to do the con floor by myself. Usually first, I just like to just go like, I don't like it. Next one next one next one and mm -hmm. then usually if i'm going back it, it would be with my friends and that's when things are getting more pointed out that it, maybe i didn't get noticed but totally i would do a convention by myself if that's one i i wanted to do just to experience mm -hmm. it and just do it honestly kind of realize that as i've gotten older that i don't give a shit what anyone else thinks i'm just gonna go do it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there, there was bonus. i feel the same way there was one con that Jason and I went to, and we were actually meeting his cousin and the, their, uh, his daughter. 
and with Jason and I got there early and we kind of we did our, our run through. We've gotten so we've gotten good where we can run through the whole floor and we know where things are. We know what we want to look go back to look at. And then when his cousin showed up and his daughter who had never been to a convention, so we were like, Okay, so we went through like the whole floor again and she was like, Oh, I wanna see this and oh, I wanna see this and it was like you know, we were kind of like, okay, let's, let's, let's keep going. But we kind of learned to slow down because we realized that there were people who've never been. And so they get overly excited. And <laughs> now she's kind of gotten the flow of con. So she knows, you know, do the first run around and then go back and really focus on what she wants to yeah. see. Yeah. So if you're going to a con and it's more than a one day convention, do you stay at a hotel? Do you stay at the block hotel? Because almost every convention they get a block at the at a local hotel. Do you do that or do you go hunting around for the lowest price, even though it might be 10, 15 miles away? Or do you just decide if you're only like an hour and a half, two hours away, do you drive back and forth? I personally, I will drive back and forth if it's within two hours. I do a two hour commute each day anyway, so it doesn't make a difference to me. Mm. Um, if it's anything further than that, though, I'm going to stay in the hotel. I'm not necessarily going to stay in the block hotel. It depends on if it's the closest one or not. And if I really feel like driving another 15 minutes away. Mm. Um, what about you, Loretta? Do you stay in a hotel when it's over one day? And um, For most of the time we do. Um, like, but, like when we go to DC, like we usually stay with Bethany and Jason, um, stay at their place. Or um, it just happened to be that we were already had planned to stay in a hotel that was a little bit closer. I mean, it's about the uh, about five ten minutes drive down the road from where the convention center is, so it was a little bit farther than what we would normally get. But it's a much better quality hotel than what was a lot closer. So, mm. and then especially right. with a convention like one of these, uh, like KatsuCon, all the hotel rooms in that area fill up very very quickly. Like uh, TFCon, we're going to be staying, we stayed in the hotel where the convention was going to be. And it seemed like it made it a lot easier because we were able to go up into the room, mm -hmm. chill out. I didn't have to worry about driving anywhere or anything like that. And I think this is the same thing we're going to do with is with future future conventions. If there's a, it's being held in a hotel and there are spaces available that's not at an exorbitant rate, we'll try and stay as close as we can because it makes it a lot easier. Mm. So, what about you, Ams? What about you, Ams? Um, well, the first one I did, it was in Baltimore. So I live very close to Baltimore. Um, we just drove in uh, for those three days and just spent my time there for um, TFCon. It was organized by Jason, Jason Lowry. So we just kind of, he kind of like got a room or like a few rooms and we split up the costs. And just like spent it that way. And it usually was, yeah, for the last two TF cons, it was um, the same hotel that the convention center was in. And it did make it very convenient. So like, you know, you go to the convention center, you buy your things or you get your stuff and you can go right back up to your room. You don't have to worry about going out, you know, tr uh, trying to figure out transport or go back to your hotel, which might be a couple miles away. It's just right there in the same building. Um, but um, I know with the last one, there was a hotel that was a lot cheaper than the one that was that, that the convention center was in. So mm -hmm. definitely for like the next convention I go to, I definitely want to be a lot smarter with it and go, okay, well maybe, you know, maybe I should try and weigh my options and see if there's a hotel that's like further out that's more worth the cost so I can don't have to worry about money too much. Yeah. So that's really it. So that's really my opinion on it. It just depends. Right. I agree with that. What about you, Beth? Um, if it's a local one, we usually just drive there and drive back to the house. Um, except for this past TFCon, because Jason was helping run the Agabus booth. So a lot of his figures were on display. He didn't want to have to worry about going to the house and getting them and, and all that. So we actually stayed at a hotel not far from the, um, the convention. It actually was a really nice hotel. We got a big room and had a lot of, a lot of people. We had a lot of people in our hotel room. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. People, people were sleeping on the floors. <laughs> uh, 
we had his brother sleeping on the floor next to our bed. How many uh, snores did you have? <laughs> a lot, because it was a lot of guys. Our nephew actually slept in the closet in our hotel oh room. <laughs> well, it was his idea. Because he's, he's kind of tall, but he's it. lanky. <laughs> and he fit... He was a perfect fit in the, in the closet. He's like, I kind of feel like Harry Potter. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> he was, like hanging himself in one of the hangers and just being suspended like that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I could see him doing that. I could see him doing that, actually. But like for the most part, like we... We just look at the prices of the um, the hotel, like the conventions in, and if it's worth, like, do we want to spend that kind of money, or can we find something a little further out that may be a little cheaper, but and also maybe nicer? Um, mm-hmm. Like this past weekend for ZoloCon, we actually were back at the hotel we stayed at for um, RetroCon, mm-hmm. right, in King of Prussia. Yeah, you remember good. that. You remember that one, Loretta. Yeah, that was a and really nice hotel. It was, and it was, it was. Yeah, it was a little bit of a drive, but it was a really nice hotel, and it for a good price. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it just depends. It depends on the con. It depends on where it's located, and mm-hmm. you know, is it worth getting a hotel in the the same? Is it worth getting a room in the same hotel as the convention? Yeah, or if it's not yeah. in a hotel, but in like a convention center, you know, finding the, the best right. hotel in the area. Yeah. Hmm. What about right. you, Chan? Um, I don't know. Uh, we usually just, we try to stay at wherever the convention is that we're going to be, you know, like for, for the weekend, the this past TF con, I, uh, we and uh, Jason ended up ended up helping us get a hotel room because I needed the oven, I needed a kitchen, so I needed like the extended stay hotel had like the extra space with the extra kitchen kind of amenities and stuff. So that was definitely a plus in it. We stayed away from the convention at the first NJCC I went to, but it was still a lot of fun because you know there was a bunch of us that all stayed at that hotel and we hung out pretty late at night with everyone else downstairs in the lobby and carried on for a while and got into some star Wars conversations <laughs> very late into the night. But um, I mean, for the most part, it's, I think it is very convenient if, if it is affordable to stay in the hotel where the convention is, because then you can just simply go upstairs when everything's over with or down a hallway, right. you know, however, whichever, whatever kind of hotel it may be. Um, but yeah, it just you just kind of you you walk. You don't have to worry about getting in your vehicles. You don't have to worry about you know uh, parking garages, trying to get through a city, trying to find your way in an area you're unfamiliar with. So I feel like it's it's cost or convenience, you know, that you have to weigh out in those circumstances. Like especially where are you staying? When we went to Chicago, definitely stayed at the convention um, mm-hmm. in the hotel where the convention was held. So it. It was very convenient. Just jump in an elevator, go to your room, crash out, go back downstairs whenever you're ready, meet up with people whenever you're ready. There isn't a, too much running around or confusion. So, I mean, all in all, it just it depends on the situation. Like because I did a lot of baked goods at TFCon, it was definitely more convenient to be away from the hotel where the con was. But it also would have been nice to be right there, you know, and we could just. Didn't have to worry about getting in and out of the parking garage all the, all the time. <laughs> well, from what I've heard, people who stayed there, it wasn't that good of a... Uh, some people didn't really like the hotel. It, no, I mean, it's a hotel. It went from... Uh, yeah. you know. what it about went you, from Grim? nice... Oh. Sorry. It went from nice the 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 last time it was at TF that it was in Reston to this time it was... It felt dirtier. It It just didn't... The whole hotel just felt not right. It hmm. was really weird. Hmm. I don't know. I, I saw the, I saw, I, uh, we walked uh, my best friend Wayne up to his room probably twice. <laughs> so I saw his room and it looked really nice. And then, you know, of course, uh, the room where we had our little meeting get together for, uh, the ROC and that looked really nice also like it, but it, it, I mean, the one, that's the other thing that's hard to remember. Like these are hotels, you know, like if we could design them ourselves, they would look way different, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, they're, they're the gonna, elevators. Yeah. They're going to oh spread a little God. too much 
peacocking into some areas. And, about like, those. You know, wood yeah. trims are going to be beat up and the carpet's not going to be perfect. So it's just keep your oh. shoes on and take a shower. You know, like how we're and, 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 and then the elevator, she couldn't do it. That's good couldn't. advice. <laughs> what about yeah, you? I, I always I always carry slippers with me when I stay in a hotel. I have learned yes. I always have slippers with me because when I, I don't want to walk around in either my socks or bare feet, I have my slippers. That's a good <laughs> idea. I should have done that last time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cabin socks work too. Uh-huh. Ooh, okay. Yep. How do you work it, Grims? How do you do it? Um, same thing as you guys said. Usually it's day a lot of the bike conventions are I just go for one day, so it's just day travel. Uh, only one I really do hotel is Fanime because as I said, it's a party yeah. party con. You gotta go up go up, hang out, get drunk, go back downstairs, go rave, go back, stay up all night, go back to sleep, and get back to the <laughs> like, just, I think at that point uh, the block hotel will be a lot more convenient because then you wouldn't mm-hmm. have to worry about transportation. So no, you just could go there. Right. That's probably just the easiest, honestly. And plus, everyone and hangs out. Knows. One of my, my one of my friends for Fanime gets the suite room so that everyone can hang out. So we literally spend Ooh. half the con, not at the con, just in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another <laughs> thing. That's right. Funny. Yeah, if you, if you can get with people and get like a suite where there are separate rooms and you can kind of mm-hmm. like just everybody can crash wherever kind of a situation. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we did this past uh, mm-hmm. TFCon. Like I said, there were a lot of people. Like Jason and I, we had one of the rooms with his brother on the floor and our cousin, our ne- nephew in the closet. And then the other room was Rob and his son. And then everyone else in the main room with like sleeping bags mm-hmm. and air mattresses. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's fun. It's like a giant sleepover. It's a party. Everybody's up all night. (laughs) These are those times where you're like spend a whole weekend with people, but you only sleep like four or five hours the whole weekend. Like that's just you you Mm -hmm, have enough where you can and you hang out when you can, you know. We had a lot of um what are the the breathing machines that some of the guys have? The C Mm -hmm. We had a lot of those going that weekend. (laughs) <laughs> people were crawling all over each other <laughs> sharing i mean i've gotten so used to sharing a bathroom that it doesn't even phase me anymore <laughs> like i have shared yeah, a bath like, about not that. like shared at the same time but right, right. taking turns using <laughs> oh a bathroom Can you imagine? with so many guys every time quick, here we go every, every <laughs> time i walk into a hotel and i'm sharing with a bunch of guys i look in the go look I get first dibs <laughs> on the bathroom because I am yes. not going yes. in. Yes. After oh, God, you no. have fucked oh. it all up. No. <laughs> I get first dibs. I have a recommendation. Yeah. The poopery spray. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh my that God, that yes. stuff is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And we that always carry awesome. we always have like Febreze or something that we can spray. Cause oh my god, the rooms them. could Just, like, start double. to get <laughs> Double Double fish. Fish. Oh, okay. not a lot of not a whole lot of fresh air goes into hotel rooms you know? oh that'd be fun yeah. to no. here's my cosplay i should do like a tool belt and have like for mm, and poopery on it there you go. deodorant oh my gosh oh, yeah yes. there you go oh like you guys you were talking about survival you. like kits I have my backpack and I have like deodorant in there. I have all this stuff that I carry. Like I have band-aids, I have tampons, I have anything. Like I've got makeup, I got a brush, anything I might need or someone else might need. I'll be like, oh yeah, I got it right here. What do you need? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I carry all the drugs. I've got the Tylenol, the Advil, yep. the mm-hmm. aspirin. I've got the, you know, the anti-diarrhea medicine, the Pepto. Everything is in my Benadryl. bag. It's like, oh, you got a headache here. Yes, exactly. What do you yeah. want? Exactly. Anna saved me a couple times because she had Advil in her bag. So I can yeah. attest to that one. Yep, yep. yep. Oh, yeah. I have Advil. I have ibuprofen. I've got, have to. Uh, I've got a Benadryl because if Jason accidentally eats something with mushrooms in it, I'm like... Like here, just just, just, just eat it. <laughs> like just I'll carry it. liquid Benadryl just like when we travel, so I can just be like, "Hey, open up, go on, go on. Yeah. <laughs> just, just take it." Just <laughs> just just it. Hand it to him. Yeah. <laughs> just rolling it like a sippy cup. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh and my you're like, god. Chug, chug, chug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean anything and everything. Like when we travel, like my little like bathroom bag, I'm like, I probably carry more stuff in that than I need, but it's like you never know when you might need something. And you don't yeah, want to have to don't. find a store to buy it when you could just have it. I think that's a mm. big problem yeah. that we have though, that the guys don't is that we are the just in case people. Like women are usually the mm-hmm. just in case. And men are usually like, I didn't even think about it. (laughs) You know, like it's kind of a thing. Not that that's a, you know, we just. Well, that's why we have purses and they have wallets. Mm. That's usually. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I just (laughs) just use a backpack. (laughs) So much easier. They're like, I can put put snacks. The last time he asked me, like, yo, why do you have so much in your purse? I'm like, well, just in case. (laughs) You never know. I have a small travel case because, you know. Oh, and then it's like, oh, could you just put this in your back? Could you hold this for me? And next thing you know, like, like I'll have, I'll like look in my bag and I'll be like, why do I have your pocket knife? Why do I have this? Why do I have that? I was like, why do I have your tape measure? Oh, <laughs> I mean, there was one time at TFCon rested. I had a pot, one of his pocket knives. I had his tape measure. I was like what the hell he's like oh i need i didn't know where to put it so i just put it in your backpack i was like uh, okay oh my god god forbid you get pulled over by anyone my gosh yeah no yeah. doubt right? oh my god what is this you know, show like, and this rope doing in your backpack what are you doing <laughs> seriously carpet tape is your friend when you're doing cosplay oh my god this stuff is amazing I've heard that. I've used that to carpet fix tape? things yes it's like double like super double stick tape it's the most amazing thing ever <laughs> oh wow nice yeah I can imagine but how do you take that off though like baby oil no well it just peels right off I mean it's really sticky but I mean like I'm gonna be using it this weekend to attach things to my costume like just okay. to secure things so most of the time it's gonna be like on top of like like holding pieces of fabric together. It's like kind of mm-hmm. like hem tape, but like thicker. It's really oh, really okay. good stuff. <laughs> cool. It sounds like it would yes. hurt taking off. Yeah, not too bad. All I can think of is like a scene where like the guy's getting waxed, so like. Rip. Yeah. Yeah. Party over. I haven't had that situation yet, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Forty-year-old virgin moment. Oh my god, no. Oh my god. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson! <laughs> oh god. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, next I was wondering, how many people have you fit into a hotel room at a con? I actually have a funny little image for this question in particular that I'll read. So, uh... It is, some of you have never squeezed into eight to 10 people in a room, hotel room meant for four, just so you could dress up like an anime character for the weekend without blowing the bank. And it shows. It really, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is something that people yep. uh, d- need to experience when they're a con goer, for sure. Oh, uh, I know that yeah. feeling. Stuffing people. Yeah. Stuffing, stuff and stuff. Try, try stuffing a bunch of people in the van and driving. What? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's <laughs> That was, yeah. that was like the most fun i have to admit i i i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't have traded that in for anything else that was like the the God, we, most next time fun. we need a bigger van we yes. do yes. i agree Definitely. well we were supposed to have a bigger van and they screwed up and we got the smaller one so we're all like crammed in there to the point where we're just like oh my god we're when- like when we went to leave, I was playing. I, w- I was loading the van when we were getting ready to leave um, to come back. And everybody was bringing their bags out. And I'm going, great. I have to play Tetris with a bunch of suitcases and carry on bags and get them in the back so that people actually have seats. And it just, it was bad. I was I was like, was this will fit here. Wait a minute. Hold on. This will squish it. I can squeeze it in here. And, <laughs> and then it was like, you know, I'm like, I hope none like- of y'all need any of this because it's not moving. <laughs> And poor Island, stuff, he like up to the back too. Like, <laughs> he was like bitching the whole time. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there was that like that picture from like slumped over sleeping on his back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best part of that was um, uh, Josh's innovation because he took his prosthetic and he put it right next to him. 
he put his coffee cup in it. It was yep. like the best thing ever. I'm like, dude, yep. you're a fucking genius. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and it was so stable. Amazing. It stayed just like that, sitting right there. It didn't move or anything. I was like, oh, dude. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, man, Bobby stop face. So <laughs> yep. Oh, he was freaking Russ out. He really was. He kept putting that mask on and he put his leg over the seat right at Russ and Russ would be like, Turn around, look. Yeah, he, was he, was that. he would rub his stuff on me his, his arm. Oh, but nothing yep. could beat nothing could beat the rest stop. <laughs> Coming home. Oh yes. no. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we should mention that or not. Oh man. So anybody <laughs> doesn't know what we're talking about. We went ahead and rented a 15 passenger cargo <laughs> van to drive from DC all the way up to Chicago with a yep. pit stop in where was it? Ohio. Yeah. Ohio. 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 Yes. So that was funny. I mean, it was like 15 of us. Not to mention we had all of our crap with us too. And picking up stragglers along the way, it was it was just really really fun. Uh, definitely a definitely a learning experience. Hey, <laughs> we got closer. We didn't kill each other, so I exactly. Mean, yeah, exactly. exactly. It was a bonding and, experience. And then of course, you know, good old Josh. The incident. <laughs> yeah. The incident. If you, don't know, if you don't know this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Jason survived to- driving the whole time. If you don't know the story about Josh, you need to listen to one of the like fe- first MPSP few theater MPSP did theater, and he mm-hmm. they did a whole thing on it, and you just hear everybody in the background just cracking. I mean, we're just dying of laughter. I mean, <laughs> I think I I think I peed myself a little <laughs> when he was telling the story. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh yeah. yeah, I was mortified oh for my him at first too, because I was just like, but then like everyone just started like rolling with it, and I was just like, okay, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just so if you want to, if you want to listen to his story, it's episode thirteen of Masterpiece Shit Piece Theater. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Hour and twenty minutes in. Yeah, yeah. that is awesome. Okay. That was a good story. All right, so now when you go to a con, how do you approach it? As a buyer or seller, do you have a budget? Do you plan? Do you just decide to roll with it and just see what happens? What, what's your, how do you handle it? Mm. I personally, I personally, I try to have a budget. Russ always breaks it, but I always have a budget. <laughs> Little does he know. And I know he's watching right now. So now he's going to know. The budget I give him, I have a little more <laughs> than what I tell him. Because yeah. I know, because I know there's going to be that thing that he goes, "Hey, do you got forty bucks left?" And I'm going to be like, "Really? <laughs> okay, here, where's your money?" Um, so, so yeah, I approach it with a budget. Um, we sold at one in JCC. That was an interesting experience. Usually we're a buyer and we're just roaming around. But yeah, we we usually definitely, we plan it a little bit, but not a lot. We kind of play it by ear. What about you, Loretta? Do you plan it? Do you have a budget? Do you? Uh, most of the time I do have a small budget. It just mostly depends on the size of the convention. Um, I try and stay in i pr- try and play it ahead of time if i know i'm going to be going to a convention i will try and set aside money from the the, the previous paychecks like little by little um i am going to be selling at my first convention coming up uh in oh. Mar- uh, may so oh. with my handbags and things like that so that's gonna that's been a really big deal just planning ahead making sure i have all the materials that i need uh ahead of time a lot of the stuff that i the, the fabrics that I use, I have to pre-order. Mm-hmm. So I had to make okay. sure that I pre-ordered all the fabrics ahead of time uh, or got into pre-orders ahead of time that were going to be in uh, in stock by the time I needed to have them for the show. So that's some of the main thing I have to worry about, uh, right especially. On. And then so like, just paying for the booth space. I mean, it's quite expensive to do the conventions. Yeah. And especially if you've never done one before, you don't have that kind of build up i mean not uh, build up but like a like a bank to go pull from Uh for Mm -hmm. for supplies and things it's kind of kind of difficult but you get used to it so what Hmm. about you ams 
Um, so usually the budgeting is handled by my husband. He's a whiz at finance. Um, and especially with the toy conventions, it's really him that's spending most of the money. Mm -hmm. I would argue with the last one because the last figure that I bought was like, what, almost $300? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, the big yeah, massive, the Transformer Dragon. Yeah, the uh, Megatron Transmetal 2. Oh, my God. He's so pretty. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Dragon so much. It but, was a um, beautiful figure. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. He's still standing in our room. So, yeah, I, I, I don't regret it. He was just a pretty penny. But um, yeah, usually Max takes care of the finance. He's like, yeah, well, a lot. X amount for you and me, and then um, break down, you know, cost of rooms and food expenses and really just make sure that we're going to be set. We don't run into a situation where it's like, oh, we're flat broke and we need to get home or we're flat broke and we need food or we're flat broke yeah. and there's this absolute must have thing that I can't be without. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be honest, I should probably be better about that. I shouldn't, you know, completely Rely, uh, rely on my husband for it, but um, I have, so it's not <laughs> horrible. That's not a bad thing. That's okay. I mean, we all do things yeah. for our own. Yeah, way, yeah. So. As a seller, I'd have to really just research that because I only did it once. And when I did sell my art at BronyCon, I um, my friend was spearheading it, so he took care of the uh, POS. He took care of. Um, all the logistics behind it. So all I had to do was make up my prices and have my sign and just do my own thing. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'd have to just really research into doing that. But I'm definitely interested in doing it again. Hmm. So I would love to see. I think I, you know, I'd have to like talk to whoever's running whatever convention and just see what I can do from there. That's really mm -hmm. it. Right on. Yeah. You, Beth. Um, I'm kind of the same with you amps i mean we just we look at what the show is what could be there what our finances is like to kind of determine the budget the hotel food stuff like that sometimes depending on on the convention we try to take food with us so if we need to we have food at like the hotel or we can take you know make sandwiches and take with us oh, yeah. so i think it's just a lot of it um yeah just you know, Jason looks at everything and goes, okay, this is what we have. We'll pull a certain amount of money out and use that. And sometimes we have a little bit of reserve just in case. Like, we get there and we go, oh, we didn't know that this was going to be here. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times when we buy, especially when we were up at, like, in JCC, we were just buying from some of the wrong guys. And Jason, of course, has gotten to know a lot of the sellers so he's been able to kind of backdoor deals. Oh yeah, absolutely. in a way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Max is in that too, especially. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, like I said, when it's, I think I've, I think most of my collection of stuff has come from uh, Jose when he's sold or Gort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And a lot of times, Cora will just look at me. He goes, "Oh, I know you like this here. Just have it." And I'm like, "I'll buy it." He's like, "No, nah, oh. no, nah, I, just, I just don't want it. You can have it." I'm just like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Griggs is like, "Don't tell me this." It's money. I'll carry it. It's money. It has nothing. It has nothing to do with me. It's <laughs> <laughs> money. He could do whatever he wants with it. If he wants to give yeah. it away, he just he just wants to get rid of the collection sometimes. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. Like I actually, I actually have a little uh, Harley Quinn that I carry around with me that he gave me. He's like, I found this. I thought you'd like it, so I was like, oh. So I threw it in my bag and it's never taken it out, taken her out. Aww, <laughs> so she's like a little, little good luck charm. Yeah, really she's like my little travel world. companion. <laughs> what about you, cool. Chan? Um, no. There is there is no real budgeting of any kind done for anything. <laughs> as of, you know, when it comes to conventions and like realm related stuff and just, you know, that family oriented circumstances, there's not there's more budgeting with bills and things like that in my household than that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is more like that's how we spend our free time. So that's not something we tried to put any kind of limits on. I mean, when it comes to spending, usually JD and I are, are when it comes to con spending, we're usually pretty, 
you know, like we know what we don't want to go over. We, we try to be as smart about it as possible, but some things you just see and you're like, okay, I really want to open this when I get home. Do I want to leave this behind? You know, like, <laughs> like at ZoloCon mm -hmm. this past weekend and I see like those little uh, Mr. Z Zootopia guys and I'm like, I can't, I can't leave these behind. Like I can't walk away from these little pig, this little piggy and like this little koala guy. Cause they have, <laughs> they have shoes and they're cool and I can pose them. And <laughs> They're fun, you know, like they have backpacks. I mean, that's why you know, your house looks like a toy that's store. Awesome. It's just, it, <laughs> look, you know, like uh, I, I went through a really bad, awesome. I went through a really bad situation a couple of years ago and I hit me and it literally hit me like a ton of lead that life is short. I'm only, I only got one pass through this and I'm going to make the most of it. If I'm going to spend a little bit of money at a convention to buy some things that I think are fun to hang around my house and make it look like some bunch that's of kooks, awesome. a bunch of kooks live here. Then that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> hey, your house is awesome. I'm, not, I'm not here to impress anybody. And I really don't give a whole hell of a lot of what anyone thinks of me. It's more, I, I just want to have some fun while I'm here, you know? So if I'm spending an extra hundred dollars at convention on something that seems a little silly to everybody else, well, they can, kiss my lily white ass <laughs> you know like that's just, that just <laughs> there you go that's how that's i feel awesome. about it i'm having a good time and that's all that's all that matters to me so there really isn't a whole lot of budgeting going on if if we can afford to go then we go if we can't then we don't and that's just how it works you know More what about you what about you grim <laughs> um probably the same as you chan uh not really like an official budget but of course just being conscious of how much you're spending Usually when it's a showroom floor, it's a quick run through to see if there's anything that stands out of, I must have that. I'll sometimes do like a buy it, like for example, like every year of anime, I buy a Kigu, so I'm dad by collection. And things <laughs> like. So there's some check mark things of what is it that mm -hmm. I want. And then I'll keep an eye off some stuff. Like if I like it or if I have enough, I haven't spent too much, then I'll go back and get it. But certain things I'll be like, that's what I want. I hunt for it. And then mm -hmm. if I don't, anything else is left over, then that's good. Because sometimes you don't know what you're going to expect. You'll find some. Artist Alley is a huge way to be yeah. able to find stuff that's more unique for a collection. As a pin collector, people create their own pins and they, they're they displaying them and stuff. And you don't oh, know. I would love to do is. those. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you can't really budget those things because they do charge like $10, $15. And those can add up really fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it really isn't yeah. what, what you're looking for. Right, right. And you're going to find unique stuff, especially if you're really looking, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So staying on that with as far as buying things while you're at a con, do you haggle with the vendors or do you just go, you know what, that looks like a fair price. I'll go ahead and pay for it. And I tell them the one story from NJCC. Remember that? that Oh, uh, with the puff, with, with the puffle. Uh, we went to NJCC and we were approached by Dave and to help him get this puffle that this lady had it was a, I'm sorry, a popple that this lady had. Mm -hmm. And he said he wanted to get it for his daughter, but he didn't, but she wanted too much for it. Could I talk her down to 20 bucks? And I was like, all right, I guess I can. So Bethany and I walk over to this lady and we're sitting there. And, you know, I'm sitting there looking at it and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I looked at Bethany and I went, it looks like the one, doesn't it? I'm telling you it is. And the lady goes, oh, you interested in that? She was giving us this price and everything. I gave her this whole story of uh, I used to have one when I was younger and now I, would like to, I would love to get, yeah, my daughter <laughs> loved it. And then it got lost and I'm trying to get my daughter one to replace it and, you know, and all this stuff. And I said, and all I have left is $20. Is there any way to drop her? She dropped the price to 20 bucks. I handed her the 20 and we were, thank you. Have a great day. We walked over. Oh, handed it she, to like, Here she, you like, go. Tried, she like tried to like, Oh, but it's still got this. It's still got that. And the thing is, yep. this has been this was a vendor who had been there, you know, year after year after year with the same stuffed animal, same yep. stuffed animal. And we're yep. like, if you're not going to sell it, just tell us and take it off the table. But if you're going to sell it, mm -hmm. sell it to someone who wants it. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's just oh, yeah. My, my you know, I, I think that's just where I, I was almost getting to the point of being like. Are you going to sell them or not? Right, mm -hmm. right. I have walked up to people before, you know, they've been selling something and, and I'll go, well, wait a minute. And I'll pull up eBay and I'll be scrolling through eBay and I'll go, um, I can get on eBay for this. And they're like, 
Um, well, I have it now. Okay, I'll add an extra dollar to it then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I can put it on. E I can buy it on eBay. You know. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jason's done that a few times. So, what I about you, think... Loretta? Do you haggle or do you just buy? I can't really say I have. I mean, if let's say I'm going to a vendor, and a lot of times, um, especially if it's a multi-day show. I will look at something and then I'll see, okay, they have postcards three for five dollars on a Saturday or three for three dollars on a Sunday. So you that's one thing you can look at this as far as multi day conventions go. A lot of people have one set price for one day and as the, the weekend closes out and they're ready to get stuff off their table, you can kinda tell which vendors are like in there just for the weekend or which vendors are in for the long haul and are willing to, tr to truck stuff around. And sometimes they'll do like price classes on, on like Sundays or, or if it's a multi day on like Mondays or Tuesdays when they're just trying to get rid of the stuff and trying to clear off the tables. Uh, but I, as far as like artist alleys and stuff like that, I really don't just because you know, especially now I know what it costs to actually be at a convention. So I, mm -hmm. I don't want to undervalue somebody else's artwork, but if it's something like an action figure, one person has it for $15, one has it for $12. I was like, well, Billy, B Billy Bob down there, down the row has it for $12. If I buy all four of these, will you do it for that price? And sometimes if I'm buying like three or four items from a certain vendor, I'll ask, but I mean, they have every right to say no. I mean, I don't like be a bitch right. about it, but I was just kind of like, can you do a better price on this? And sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. What about you, Ams? I'm not great at haggling. I'm not good at intimidating people. So <laughs> I haven't yeah, really done nice. that myself. <laughs> um, but no, I have uh, seen that when you're talking about them for the multi-day conventions. That mm -hmm. people, some people, they like reduce their prices and I swoop in and go, oh my God, really? You still have this? I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know that um, not really a haggling, but uh, the last two TF cons Max had worked with Haney uh, Agabus um, and helped him like set up stuff and everything. So I know he's gotten like good deals just for like offering his volunteer work. Um, other than that, like if I see a price I'm not I don't agree with, or I'm like, hey, I can get that elsewhere for a better price, I'll usually just move on and just mm -hmm. find something better, or just go, yeah, guess it's just not for me. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, Lady Love? Um, I've gotten better at it. Um, there have been times where, like, I, I again, like, I don't do much of the artist alley, so it's, like, toys and stuff. I'll look at it and go, hmm, I'll take these four for this. How's that? And they take it or they don't. And um, it's actually really mm -hmm. funny because when we, we were at – uh, TFCon in Reston and we had our nephew and I would take him around and I'd be like, okay, you can look at the stuff in the bins and maybe on the table, but nothing else. These are, these are the areas that you can look at. And he actually got to the point where he was able to start, he would start actually haggling. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to let this 13 year old, he's got <laughs> his shit together. <laughs> He'd be like, well, I've got, I've got 10 bucks left. Can I have it for 10 bucks? The guy, they would be like, not expecting this kid to come like <laughs> haggle them, and I'm just like, don't look at me. This is all on him. That's really great. <laughs> what about you, Chan? Mm, I don't really haggle much now. Not nine times out of ten, I just you know I I look at a vendor, or see something I like, and I'm like, hey, what do you got on that? You know, and they're nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, I got this on it. And usually the sticker's there and you can see that they do. And they're like, but I'll take this for it. You know, like I've noticed nine times out of ten, if you ask a vendor directly about something, mm -hmm. they're more than willing to try to make a deal. I mean, some of these people yeah. don't want to go home with what they have. And they are trying mm -hmm. to, you know, make their make their quota for, you know, whatever their budget is as far as, you know, their their booth pricing and then their hotel and their travel expenses. So it's, you know, it's kind of like a give and take, you know, they're, they're here trying to sell and you're there trying to buy. So, I mean, really how much of a deal are you, are you really expecting to make on something, you know, 
if you really want it, you're going to pay the price for it, whether you do it at a convention or on eBay, either way, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> that's just how I look at it. As far as artwork and things like that go, if it's something I really, really love, or I really, really want, I'm going to pay the price for it. Because as an artist, I know that it isn't easy to put yourself out there creatively, whether it's something you're putting on paper or like with what you're doing, Loretta, and, and creating amazing things for people to actually physically take with them places and carry, you know, like bags and, and purses and things of that nature. So it's hard, it's hard to, to put yourself out there creatively. So I'm more than willing to spend that money, you know, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's just how I feel about it. What about you, Grims? Uh, no, I don't haggle. No. I usually don't, I'm not buying anything that's usually of mainstream because I've already <laughs> bought that. If there's something of that nature, I've already done it elsewhere through main purchases. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm usually most cons. I'm usually doing a lot of more of the unique stuff, the artist alley ish type things. Um, and that's, as you said, it's supporting the artists. So mm -hmm. I, usually, I'm not going to try to usually a lot of those places, they have a deal buy two get this, buy this set, get it type of stuff. So right. they're usually doing their own deal anyway. So there's really no need to do any kind of haggling. Mm -hmm. And if there is, you're just like, if you're with right. friends or something like that, like, I want this one. Is there anything off this table you want? Maybe we can split the price or something. It's usually how it works. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I don't have it typed up, but I'm curious. Let's say Catherine down the street is wanting to go to a convention and you've got two conventions coming up. You have a multi-day coming up and you have a, a standard convention coming up. Both of them are in her wheelhouse as to what she's into. Which would you recommend a first time or go to a one day smaller convention or a bigger multi-day convention? I one personally day. would suggest starting out. Yeah, I would too. A one day would definitely be the best because the big conventions can definitely be overwhelming. What do you think, mm -hmm. Loretta? Definitely. Um, I usually, when I started out doing conventions, we went to, Justin and I went to a big convention. And I was like, oh my gosh, what has this thing, well, this thing is crazy. I'd never been to any other conventions before. It was, we had bought these tickets and I wanted to go. And it's like, wow, this thing is crazy. And then I went to a couple local conventions that were smaller. And I was like, okay, these are a little bit more manageable. And as I, we got more and more into the conventions, I figured like, okay, different ways of doing different things so definitely start out with smaller would be better that way you don't get yourself overwhelmed um that way you don't have to feel like you're like i don't know claustrophobic i mean kind of like so many people so many like yeah especially if you're like any kind of empathetic about people it can be crazy trying to be in a very large space with a lot of people and it's like really nuts <laughs> What about you, Ams? Yeah, I know I agree. I do. Because, um, yeah, I, I can't really say for my first convention, I was behind a booth the whole time, so I wasn't really in the crowd. So, yeah, I guess, yeah, for anyone's first time in a convention, a, a one day would be good, or, like, a little local one would be ideal to start with. Um, and then you can work your way up to the multi-day, the more involved, bigger conventions, and really have fun with that once you get a, a feeling for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, Beth? Um, I mean, I was kind of like Loretta. I think my first convention was Awesome Con. And, yeah, it was a little intimidating. I mean, we didn't do – we just did one day there. But it was still a huge – it's still a huge convention if you've ever been to it. And then we started finding local smaller ones, and we were going to those. And we just kind of built up on it. But um, I usually recommend people who have never been to a convention and want to try – Try to find a local one that you can go to that's close to your house. You know the area. You know things around um, that you can go to. And if you need to, you can then leave and go, you know, you can just leave and you don't feel like you've just wasted a lot of money on a ticket or hotel room or, you know. So, yeah. yeah. What about you, Chan? I'd say it depends on the person because some people are the kind of people who like to jump in and before they test out the water. So, you know, like I, I think it, if it was a friend coming to me about it, I would try to go off of their personality base. You know, if it's somebody who has some social anxiety stuff, yeah, I agree, you know, start off small, but if it's somebody who is, you know, ready to 
to try to check something out and and really get into it, then just go for the gusto and jump in, you know, do a cosplay. I'll fo- I'll follow you around all day, you know, like I don't care. <laughs> it depends. I think it really depends on the person and 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 what their personality is going to, you know, would would handle, you know, a, as far as that goes, you know, if it was a close friend of mine, they're like, I really want to go to Comic-Con and I want to dress up like Iron Man. I'd be like, okay, let's go, <laughs> you know, and I'd, yeah. I'd, and I'd help them, you know, and then just be involved. But if it was somebody who's a little more like me, yeah, then I'd probably be like, hey, like check out RetroCon. You don't have to do anything. It's a big con, but it's not a huge con. Mm-hmm. It's small, it's local. Like, let's go there together. That's what I do, did with Wayne. And and I we went with him to his first convention, which was RetroCon and stayed and, and saw the band afterwards and hung out with people in, in you know, Transformers cosplay and had a great that time. Was, oh. <laughs> yeah, a good time. What about you, Grams? Uh, I say go big or go home because that's how I started. In fact, <laughs> I will bring up one picture because for some reason I, I came across it recently. Um, this is my first ever cosplay slash convention going to. Right. I'm the one in pink, of course. Uh, I made Ooh, that costume wow. myself with the help of my mom. Uh, I had to have been in college just out of high school. I had been maybe 19 years old. So that's a good almost uh, maybe 18 years old photo right there. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I say go big. Just go live the experience. Honestly, conventions are fun they're what you make of it and you shouldn't be scared of any of it um even if it's a waste of money you got to live that experience personally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's true that's true yeah well ladies we have hit the 10 o'clock hour i do believe that it is time for us to get ready to say good night Right. Yeah. Day, all right, guys. Well, we all guys want to thank you guys for watching and listening. Uh, you can always find us on uh, here on Spotify, on iTunes, uh, Podbean. Be sure to like and share and subscribe. Uh, Facebook, Total Package Podcast. Insta at totalpackage.podcast. YouTube, Total Package Podcast. And Twitter, totalpackage.pod. Thanks. Have a great night, you guys. Night. 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 See you later.